Well, welcome to another show, uh, Cooking with Chef Johnny Schwa, show number seven. Show number seven, I, I can't believe it. It's so exciting uh, to be able to bring our dinner each day um, to you know, this platform and be able to share with you. Uh, really incredible. You know, each day I'm coming home and not really sure what I'm gonna make. Uh, Robin, my wife, and I both do the shopping, whether she goes or I go or we, to get, we go together. Um, our main focus is not so much planning out every night what we're gonna make, but just buy lots of things that we enjoy, whether it be fruits or vegetables, um, different meats and things, um, sauces, spices, and then you know finding new things out there. Um, you know some of the best things that I've had in the past couple of years have come from just trial and error or not knowing what something is and just buying it and uh, and being able to uh, try that and then see how I would uh, use it. Uh, recently, in coming up with my uh, kimchi recipe for Sour John's, I came across this recipe, um, uh, not recipe, sorry, this ingredient uh, from the Chengdu region of China, and it is a fermented uh, chili paste, unlike anything that I've ever, ever had before. It, you know, when you taste it, it's such an umami burst, um, not overly spicy, but fermented um, with a little bit of an olive flavor. Uh, it's really outstanding. Uh, so today, what do we have? Well, I came home and I saw some chicken legs that I've had, and I have lots of grains. Uh, we've gotten away from eating lots of different uh, grains at the house. Rob and I were eating farro and quinoa and, to, you know, tabbouleh or barley or you know, uh, even rice, you know, uh, bringing different grains in. And, uh, you know, we get lazy, uh, start eating some pasta, too many potatoes, and the pounds start really packing out. And we've been talking about it. We've really been feeling it. So, look in the cabinet today and uh, found that I bought a, a large bag of white quinoa a couple weeks ago at the store. I've been holding on to it and waiting to pull it out. So, looking around, uh, seeing what I've had, um, and thinking about what I'm, what I'm going to make tonight. And I just start pulling ingredients out. Okay, I have this, I have this, I have this. And then once I see three or four ingredients out, I just, you know, look at a way to kind of tie them all together. And this is the kind of the magic uh, that I do, um, is take leftovers, things from three days ago, and reinvent them into brand new dishes that the family really has no idea about. And uh, they, they're really excited about it. They may, may not have eaten the ground beef three days ago for something, but we've reinvented it and we cooked it and did this to it and all of a sudden tonight they love it. And I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Uh, not trying to trick anybody uh, or, or anything, but you know, we gotta utilize food. You know, food is money. <laughs> food was, you know, a lot of times a living animal, a uh, living vegetable and should be given the respect that, uh, that it's due. So I came home, I had some chicken, uh, chicken legs, and my chicken legs right over here, and I, uh, they were frozen. And I took them out, I defrosted them, uh, opened them frozen, and then put spices on them. This was about an hour and a half ago. Put spices on them, put salt, uh, some pepper, some garlic powder, um, and we used the Berber spice. Uh, the Berber spice um, really is a combination of, of many different uh, spices uh, put together, used in Morocco. Um, Googled a little while ago was saying uh, the Greek islands, uh, but I know it mostly from Morocco. One of the uh, you know one of their, their their famous spice mixtures, or if not the, the famous spice mixture in Morocco, uh, is Berber spice, and it's a, a mixture of everything from cinnamon sticks and paprika and cayenne. Uh, you can use chilies in there. It's, it's really amazing. It can be very powerful. I was making a Berber sauces when I was at Prime Meats um, back in the day, um, but using the Berber spice. So salt, pepper, um, we have some adobo on there, a little bit of Berber spice, and then lots of garlic powder. Okay, uh, we're gonna be using a uh, combination cooking today technique. Uh, we're, not, we're using the broiler, but I'm using the broiler convection. So what that's going to do, it's going to allow the hot air really to circulate around the oven because I don't want my chicken too high. Uh, we had a fire here in the house last week, actually. Uh, we had burgers in too close to the broiler, oven caught on fire. Uh, we grabbed the fire extinguisher and put it right out. Family came together, um, you know, pretty great. Uh, I was very proud of everybody. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a scary thing, you know, um, so we got to be really careful. So I'm using my larger oven. 
I have the rack set on number two, and I have it on broiler convection. If you don't have broiler convection, you can just put it on broil, broil it on, on all sides, and then just get your oven nice and hot. Uh, these chicken legs don't take a whole lot of time. Uh, we're not trying to braise them. Uh, but the combination I'm talking about is two dry heat cooking techniques. One is the broiler, and the second one is the, is the convection. So I'm going to go ahead, I have my broiler convection on, and I'm going to go ahead and I have um, my legs, and I want to set them with just a little bit of olive oil, not too much. You know, I'm just going to open up the olive oil and, and go very lightly. Uh, I'm going to put my fingers over the top and just give a nice drizzle, uh, not bathing them in oil, and we're going to go really nice and light. You know, being that we're using the broiler, uh, the broiler is that dry heat cooking technique, and we do have skin on our, on our legs to protect them uh, from drying out. Uh, we want to give them uh, a little bit of help. Uh, the olive oil is also going to help to give um, flavor and a little bit better caramelization. So I'm going to go ahead and get my legs in. Again, we're working with the convection broiler. Um, so the oven's going to be hot. There's no way of regulating the temperature on convection broil. You know, don't forget that. The broiler is the high heat cooking technique, so it's on all the way. Uh, and it's using that top source, so you know it could end up getting in the five, 550 range um, at some point. Okay, next up, um, we're going to be making a quick sauce uh, before we go ahead and make our uh, quinoa. We're making a tomato bacon quinoa today, and I'm going to be using some bacon I had left over uh, that had been cooked really slow, um, a little bit of star anise, a little bit of sake, a little bit of mirin, a little bit of soy sauce, not much. Um, sorry about that, everyone. Had a little bit of technical difficulty, um, and we just fixed it. So, um, the sauce we're going to be making is um, a coconut milk, unsweetened. Uh, and we're going to be adding a pre-made tikka masala sauce. A friend of mine that I uh, just met who owns a commissary in South Amboy has his own line of products. And I'm going to tell you, this stuff was amazing. Um, I'll pull the, the uh, container out. We'll take a look at it. Um, but it says tikka masala sauce, and there is nothing fake about this. If I was going to make a tikka masala sauce, it would be very similar to what's out there. Uh, so we're going to mix our coconut cream uh, with a tikka masala. So I'm going to go ahead and get a, a small pan out. See if I can find one here. There we go. And um, we're just going to add those two ingredients together. We're going to put our coconut little bit chunky on the cream. Uh, that's just fine. And there are so many spices in here, so many great things that I'm gonna mix this tikka masala sauce with a little bit of coconut, and we're gonna be serving that over our chicken today. Um, our chicken's gonna be cooked dry, but we wanna give everybody the opportunity to have a little bit of sauce, a little bit of gravy, right, masala, um, in their item. So, my family loves coconut milk, uh, we love Indian uh, tikka masala, um, and it has just a really rich flavor. So I'm going to put that on the back burner and just put that on low. All right. So we're going to keep that on low, and then we're going to start getting ready to make our tomato bacon quinoa. I have my bacon in the refrigerator. I'm going to go ahead and grab that out. And we're going to cut the bacon into uh, what we call lardones. This bacon has been braised in the oven, um, kind of in the uh, chasu style. Uh, really nice and tender, uh, very flavorful. It still does have the rind on. So you can see that it's very tender. The rind is still on the back. I could leave it on. I know, I know my family will complain if I do leave it on. So I'm going to go ahead and take off that rind. You could use... Regular bacon for this, you don't need to use a, a pre-cooked uh, bacon at all. I'm using it because that's what I have. Uh, but if you have just some regular bacon at home, you want to use sausage instead. Um, you know, any kind of fatty meat is really going to end up, uh, work out really well with this. Um, again, and it really could be any kind of fatty meat. We're going to be cutting our bacon into lardones today. And uh, a lardon is a French style of cutting a, a, usually a fatty piece of meat like bacon, and you could go into long lardones, 
You could have short lardones, and basically they're just a cross cut um, into small pieces, and they're usually um, going to be rendered out. We're going to be cooking our our bacon, starting it on a low heat, and we're going to be using the rendering technique. You know, if you pay attention, you know I love to share the knowledge of my profession and the terminology, the key terms that we share in class uh, well, are not only going to make you more efficient in, in, in cooking, um, but they're going to um, help you to stay organized and help you to communicate better while in the kitchen. So as you can see, we have our bacon all cut into nice lardones, right? Usually a rectangle shape uh, piece, as you can see, uh, usually cut from a fatty piece of meat. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start that in a cold pan. Now, you're saying, well, why do you wanna start that in a cold pan when I have the pan nice and hot and get it seared? We're not necessarily looking to sear the lardones. I wanna melt out the fat, and by starting them in a slow pan, I'm gonna allow the fat to melt out of the lardone instead of just caramelizing. Caramelization is great flavor, nothing wrong with caramelization. Um, it's just not what I'm looking for. If you would like to have crispy bacon in this, which sounds great, uh, you can have crispy bacon, cook it on a high heat, uh, get that bacon nice and crispy, uh, and then use that as a base. And you know, crispy bacon, tomato, uh, quinoa, wow, that, that really sounds amazing. All right, so um, we're gonna get this going. And while we're doing that, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit our, about our quinoa. Uh, the quinoa we already have preset and ready to grow, uh, ready to go. And for a lot of people that are complaining that you know you're tired of rice or you're tired of potatoes or you eat pasta every night, there are so many grains that are out there. So really take advantage of these grains. Uh, you can just boil them in water, have them in your refrigerator, and then pull them out for salads, soups, um, you know, and um, and even make a rice peel off with them. Instead of using rice, use barley. Use farro, saute onions and garlic, saute a little bit of, of broccoli with them, okay? And then stir in or spinach and mix in your, your barley, your farro, your quinoa. So this is pre-cooked. Um, and what we did was we had um, just some water and I flavored that water with some butter and some olive oil. Uh, we put in some salt, we put in pepper uh, and a little bit of garlic powder. Uh, brought that to a boil, we added our quinoa and the quinoa has got to cook for 15 minutes on a low boil, very, very low, covered, and then it's got to rest for about 10 minutes. You want to fluff it after it's done, um, done resting. And by fluffing, we mean release the heat. You know, something we do as chefs to even rice peel off, we're done cooking our rice and letting it rest. We want to move it and it really pulls a lot of steam out and it stops the rice from overcooking, from getting too clumpy and pasty. So fluffing our rice. Uh, may I use all my quinoa today? I don't know. You know, probably not. Um, I'll probably use a small base of it, put the rest in the refrigerator, and we'll be using it for salads and, and all kinds of different items. Let's check on my, uh, my lardons. I hear that really starting to cook right now. All right? And they're sticking. I want to give them some nice little stir. They're looking really great. Right? One jump ship over there. We saw that. A little guy jump out. And I'm going to help this along. And I want to give it just a little bit of olive oil now it's getting started. I am getting a little bit of caramelization, um, but it's looking looking really nice, okay? And then we can, you know, really kind of control our heat and just turn that down a little bit. Okay, so um, next up we're going to talk about sweating some onion and garlic. Now, you can go two ways with this. You could add the garlic in with the bacon lardones and let the garlic brown, uh, then add your onions for sweating, or you could just add your your garlic, uh, your garlic and onions together and let them sweat together. Now remember when we're using the sweating technique, you know, it's a slow method of cooking. We're developing the natural sugars. We're not adding any caramelization and sweating really helps to develop the flavors in all vegetables. Um, and then, you know, while you're cooking, you know, it may start out as a high heat cooking technique, but then you're gonna turn it down. You know, sweating starts out as a high heat, starts out as a saute, uh, and then get moved down to a low heat cooking technique to kind of uh, let those let those uh, flavors really develop. All right, so for me, I like the flavor of brown garlic. You know, um, my mom would make tomato sauce or 
or my nanny would make tomato sauce. Um, the smell of garlic uh, cooking in the house was something that I, 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 I still to this day love. I loved working uh, at Frankie's uh, 457 because when, you know, I went downstairs and uh, Eliberto or Saul or any, any of the guys were downstairs, Chiquito were downstairs, it always smells so great. And I would always tell them, oh my God, I never want to leave here. If me working down here in this kitchen feels like I'm at home. It doesn't even feel like you're at work because Italian food to me is, is, is my life. And I actually went to a really, um, really good restaurant this weekend. I'm not going to tell you where it is just yet. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go back, but i tell you what. I don't go out for Italian food. And I went out with my cousin, my two cousins, and they said, we're going to take you to this nice Italian restaurant. It's going to be really great. I don't go out for Italian food. What do you mean you want to go to Italian? I said, I cook Italian food home myself. I don't need it. They said, no, you got to you know, trust us. You got to go. Okay, fine. They said, it's old school Italian, small hole in the wall. Food was great. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. When they walked in, there was a, a counter where people were sitting at, at a counter eating a, Italian food. People were sitting down. It felt like uh, we were in a, in a, in a Goodfellas or, uh, or something, you know. Really, really great feeling. And the warmest, nicest people. The food was phenomenal. We ordered way too much food, of course. Uh, we had everything from uh, stuffed peppers. We had long, hot peppers and potatoes. Uh, we added, uh, oh gosh, what else did we have for appetizers? We, we, we ate so much. Uh, I ended up having uh, veal parm for dinner. I never order veal parm. I don't even order veal. And I tell you what, I ordered the veal parm. The veal parm was great. Uh, I paid for it. Okay, so I'm starting to get a little caramelization on my garlic, and I don't want it to burn. So by adding my onion, my onions are going to cool the pan down. They're going to prevent um, the, the, the garlic from browning because one, they're going to be letting off some water and two, they're going to be absorbing a lot of the heat uh, that was overcooking uh, the garlic. Well, it's not overcooked, but you know, would end up being overcooked. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my onions and sweating. I see my sauce is coming to uh, a nice boil, uh, very thin right now, very thin sauce, uh, but looking really great. I'm going to check out my chicken. I'm starting to smell my chicken cooking. And again, I'm on the second level, so I'm really not too worried um, about burning. All right? Wow. This is looking really amazing. Really, really amazing. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip that chicken over and get some nice caramelization on all sides. Really, really looking great. Nice browning. Okay? And once you see that top, okay? you got to let it cook. That top's going to sit back in a liquid again, and it's going to absorb a lot of flavor, okay? So right now, as we're cooking, you don't want to, you know, have a little bit. You want a lot of caramelization when, when you're using the broiler, okay? Especially when you're turning and flipping, um, and those flavors are going to be well combined. I'm going to take some from the outside, move them to the inside, right? Take my contaminated tongs, going to keep them in a separate area, and I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken back in. So chicken back under the broiler, and really nice. Again, the nice dark, nice dark brown uh, of the spices, uh, toasting of the those spices, the Berber spices, letting them flip over and sitting back in its own juices. Uh, it's really just gonna make the chicken um, really nice. All right, so we have our onions going, we have our items going. Let's bring you in, into the picture here. All right, so we have all these items going. We have onions, we have the bacon lardones, and we have the garlic, okay? And we have those going. We're using that sweating technique, and I'm gonna to start to turn up my flame a little bit higher. You know, we are using the sweating technique, but I would like to brown my onions just a little bit. I'm gonna be adding in my tomatoes uh, into my uh, bacon and onions and garlic, and I'm using cherry tomatoes sliced, they're really not in season yet. They looked really great in the store. We were in Whole Foods, or uh, not Whole Foods, Wegmans. And we bought uh, some tomatoes, they're looking really good. So I have a nice high flame right now. Let me give us a nice stir. And again, I'm starting to pick up a little bit of caramelization. Everything is looking 
looking really great, looking really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my tomatoes at this point, um, and then we're gonna be tossing in our quinoa. Uh, you can use a little bit of stock when you add the quinoa, you can use a little bit of water with it. Uh, I'm just gonna go natural today, I'm not gonna be adding any. Uh, we're not gonna probably eat for a little while, uh, I'm gonna wait for our chicken, and I wanna give time for all those flavors to kinda of come together. Um, and they all kind of marry together and the quinoa really absorbs them. So we're going to start putting it all together and we'll see how it looks. So again, I'm going to move my tomatoes and onions around. Looking really good. I'm not looking for my tomatoes to break down too much. I want to get them going. Uh, I want to add a little bit of salt and pepper uh, to keep them going. Add a bit of salt. I'm going to put a little bit of a little pepper in there, get my spices going. Um, and again, I did flavor the quinoa uh, before, I, um, before I boiled it, okay? So we're gonna get that in there, take a quick look at our chicken. Okay, oven's really hot now, so we wanna be really careful, all right? And we're looking great, taking up some incredible, incredible caramelization, incredible flavors. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add our quinoa at this point. I used about, used most of it. I cooked about uh, two cups of raw quinoa. Um, so, you know, if you can gauge how much that is, probably added uh, probably you know, two and a half cups of cooked quinoa in. And I don't want to get this flame, flame down nice and low. Okay, I want to mix all those flavors in. I want to pick up all that oil. Um, and that's really going to act as, you know, the flavor in this dish. You know, playing on the VLT, um, it is the bacon tomato quinoa, you know, uh, and what's really great, I think we, we have in there is um, I have a horseradish mayo that would taste incredible with this. Um, I'm not going to use it for today. Uh, we're going to go with our, our coconut uh, masala sauce, uh, but that's going to be the way to go. Um, our tikka masala sauce is cooking. Uh, we're going to cook that until it browns um, and it's going to start to reduce a little bit. Okay, it's very watery right now. The sauce is going to condense them down uh, and get a little thicker. Uh, and then we'll have our tomato bacon quinoa. Uh, we're going to have our broiled chicken. Let's take a look at our broiled chicken and see how, how they are doing. And you can just see, boy, they look great sizzling. They look nice and brown and beautiful. Uh, looking really incredible. I think we're about two minutes away. I'm gonna turn the oven um, down to uh, 425 degrees. I'm gonna use baking, no more convection. We'll have plenty of caramelization on the outside of our chicken. And we're just gonna roast our chicken the rest of the way. Figure our chicken will take about 30, 35 minutes uh, to finish cooking, maybe a little bit less. Uh, the broiler got it going really well. Uh, it's about 25 minutes, um, again, about 425 degrees. So to cap off our, our dinner tonight, we have the tomato bacon quinoa. Uh, again, we use uh, some bacon, some chasu bacon, uh, slow cooked bacon. Uh, you can use raw bacon. Uh, we rendered our bacon, little onions and garlic, sweated that out, picked up a little caramelization, and then we added our, t our, our tomatoes and then our quinoa. You could finish a little bit of fresh herbs into the quinoa would be beautiful, a little bit of oregano. I can't wait for the season to come. Happy spring, everybody. And then uh, we have our broiled Berber spice chicken. This is a Berber spice uh, combination. Uh, everything on there from paprika and ginger, cinnamon, um, organic garlic, all kinds of great things. Uh, the flavors and aromas are amazing. Uh, they go well with shrimp. Put it into your shrimp oil. Uh, I'm sure it'd be great. Uh, so our final dish will be the, will, will be the quinoa. Um, we're gonna be adding um, the chicken broiled and then a little bit of the tikka masala gravy. Um, I do have a little bit of herbs I'm going to be adding. I just forgot. I had some broccoli rabe that I had left over. And I'm going to chop up the broccoli rabe. And just remember, as I'm talking about it, I'm going, you know, I think I forgot about something. So we're going to take this broccoli rabe and we're going to chop it up. This is from the other night. Uh, and there's a, a, a long hot pepper in here, too. So we're going to add in some long hot pepper and some broccoli rabe and cutting it into small pieces. How will they know? They'll never know, right? And we're gonna put it in there, right? This is what cooking is about. 
utilizing what you have in your refrigerator, you know, giving your family the best that you can give them, uh, and and don't and, and without holding back. So we're gonna go ahead and add those in there. We got those two items in there, and then we're gonna fold those in. And again, we can take a look um, at our dish today, and it really looks amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and add in. Got broccoli rabe, my tomato bacon, quinoa. That's a little hot, right? So that's fine. We're, we're gonna, not going to be eating for a little while. And then keeping an eye on our chicken. All right. So flame is off now. I'm going to check out the chicken one more time. Make sure my, my towel is folded so I'm not going to be burning my hand. And oh boy. Wow. Like tandoori. Look at that. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the broiler at this point, and I'm gonna change it to, ah, uh, I said I said 425 before, I'm gonna go 375, and I'm gonna go bake. I'm gonna go 375 bake, what the hell? You know, um, gotta listen to the little inner voice in you. Thank you so much for accompanying me today and being here uh, for our show. Um, it's been amazing. Seventh show, uh, plenty more to come. Uh, we've turned the camera sideways. Um, a lot of people contacting me and asking me, you know, make it a little wider and it needs to be wider. So we're out there uh, looking good. Um, you know, calling arts instructor, Homedale High School, 22 years. Uh, we're working on ramen right now. Uh, we're making tonkatsu broth, we're making homemade ramen. Uh, last week we made a college mock ramen with some dried, uh, dried ramen we bought from the store, but we made a corn miso broth and we cooked the corn cob in the miso broth and scraped all the corn milk out. It was an incredible technique. Uh, chasu pork, scallions, uh, mushrooms, the whole works. Um, and it really came together. Uh, it was really, really great. So thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for being here. And from my family to yours, God bless. And uh, have a blessed spring. Thank you.